Let's bring some old school deconvolution and convolution in. Welcome to SETI Astro. As always, head over to SETIastro.com under Astro Programs, SETI Astro Suite. There's the link to the GitHub repository under Git it here, where you can get the latest version. Now I want to preface the video with convolution and deconvolution is mathematically just hard. Um, one of the best resources if you want to see some really deep underlying math to it is 3blue1brown. He does some excellent stuff, well worth a watch if you want to do a deeper dive into it that this is not going to be what this uh, video is. I would also direct you to Deep Sky Detail. He does uh, some amazing stuff as well. And specifically, he has some videos around deconvolution, kind of more the, the math just behind the deconvolution, and plenty on signal-to-noise ratio. He's building his own neural net-based sharpening uh, program as well. So definitely worth a, a watch if you're going to want to go into more, more theory behind the deconvolution aspect of it. And before jumping into my implementation in SETI Astro Suite, I, I do want to show that even a very mature program like Pix Insight, it, it deconvolution is, is just hard. We'll, we'll, we'll say that even with a known blurring kernel, in general, there's no analytic solutions to the integrals involved. So everything is numerically estimated. So we can take an image here. We can apply a convolution of known kernel, shape, size, everything. We can apply that here. I can make a copy of that here. And then we can go into one of the various deconvolution algorithms out there. I'm just going to use the Richardson Lucy. 30 iterations. It's the same PSF, the same known PSF that we just used to convolve it. Theoretically, it should completely undo it. And here it is after... 30 iterations it's it's honestly not it's honestly not even close to the original like there's the before and then here's going to be convolution immediately followed by deconvolution with the same kernel right so deconvolution is just hard and for the math not inclined it's it's almost like um like factoring a big number it's a lot easier to multiply two numbers together than try to figure out which two numbers were multiplied together to get that big number. So you could have it in your mind. It's something like that here as well. Much easier to convolve something than to try to deconvolve it because there's no analytic way to like go backwards. So on to my implementation in SETI Astro Suite. I just have a, a little test image here and you'll see a new little icon here, F convolved with G and that under functions it's there as well, convolution, deconvolution. You can click this and it has its own UI. You have zoom in, zoom out, fit to preview, you know, those kind of normal things. And off to the left, you have convolution, deconvolution, PSF estimator, which is amazing. And I don't, I, I haven't seen this anywhere else. And then a uh, total variation denoiser, which is a traditional denoising algorithm as well, if you want to kind of strictly stay away from neural net based uh, sharpeners and denoisers. So we can go, go through the items here. Convolution, very similar to every other tool that does convolution. You have a, a radius off of the side. Your kurtosis is the shape and you can kind of see that down in the little viewport, viewport here. As you get it bigger and bigger and bigger, it just gets a steeper sidewall edge we have aspect ratio, where you can make it thinner or squatter, and a rotation. There's also strength, so if you don't want to full blast it, it's in there. Preview, undo, push to slot, and you, then you just close it. So if you just want to blur it by this kernel here, just hit preview. You can see it blurred it all like that. And if you want, you can, you can push to the slot. And now it's been pushed. Under deconvolution, we have a couple different methods here. We have Richardson Lucy. There's the Wiener. We have Larson Sikanina and Evan Sittert. So the most 
I'd say the most common one people use is the Richardson Lucy. You can adjust the PSF for your image in here. Number of iterations. 30 is a pretty good one. In the theoretical limit of infinity, right? Um, it should approximate the actual analytic solution for the deconvolution, but in practice, it, it never really does. There's a regularization. We have both the Tikhanov and a total variation method. L2 really does work really, really well. Uh, or you could go none, that's something you could play with. If you have enabled deep ringing on, it does two things. One, when it's doing the Richardson Lucy method, it clips any of the negative values in the algorithm as it's working it. It's also going to run a single bilateral denoise script at the very end to help with deringing. And then since it is a very computationally intense process, the option for just deconvolving the luminance only is on by default. If you have it off, it will run it for each channel. I also have it set up that it's going to try to fully maximize the use out of your um, your CPU cores. And again, there's, there's a strength down here. For the Wiener method, it's almost the exact same thing. Uh, there's also a spot in here where you can approximate the noise to signal. And it's just a different way of trying to do deconvolution just a little bit differently. And with this method, it's, it's a single pass, unlike the iterative method of Richardson Lucy. Larson Seconina is interesting. This is for rotational sharpening. Uh, so I'm not gonna demonstrate it on this. We'll look, at, we'll look at a different image, but it's highly utilized for comet tails, total solar eclipses, things like that where there's some radial symmetry that you're trying to sharpen. And then the Van Sittert is another deconvolution method. It has a number of iterations, and then the relaxation is almost the level of sharpening it does. It's not, it's not a very popular one, it's not used very often, because the, the Richardson Lucy and the Wiener methods uh, actually use a kernel of PSF, right? Which takes us to my PSF estimator tab. This is probably the coolest feature in this whole thing. What it's going to do is detect the stars and essentially average them into one shape. And that'll be the PSF. So it's, it's estimating the PSF off the stars. So if I just click run extraction, it gives me this as my PSF. And then I could click use as current PSF and now it's gonna actually set that, and you can see it here, using Stellar PSF now as, as the kernel to use for deconvolution. And we can see that change. So let's go ahead and run this crazy um, blurring. We'll push it to the slot. So now our actual image is blurred. So now if we go into the PSF estimator, and click uh, run the extraction. Now you can see that it, it sees the stars elongate it. So it's really gonna be detecting the PSF of your image. And then you can click, you know, use the current PSF. And again, over on the Richardson, Lucy and Wiener methods, now it's going to use this elongated star shape uh, to, to utilize its kernel now for the, for the deconvolution. So we can go ahead and run it now. And it's done, and you can go ahead and, and push it to the slot. And again, deconvolution is hard. These were extremely elongated shapes I gave them with, with a really bad convolution. Uh, but the, the stars are getting more of a circular appearance again, although not, not perfect. Uh, as, as we already talked about, deconvolution is, is never going to be perfectly undoing whatever kernel is in there. It's just show not, now I have another image up here. And if we run the extraction, now you can see it's quite, quite a bit different uh, star shape than, than just a, a round circle.
And more realistically, what you're probably going to do is make a mask where you want to mask out areas you don't want to be sharpened, and you probably also want to mask out stars. So I've I've made a mask like this where I want to just sharpen the nebula, but also uh, there's a star mask inside there, so you don't uh, try to sharpen up the stars. So let's go ahead and just apply that mask. And convolution deconvolution works just fine with uh, with masks. So we can go ahead and do our PSF estimator. We could say use use it as current one. We can do either the the Wiener or the Richardson Lucy. I'm I'm just going to do the Richardson Lucy with the regularization L2 preview. And I just wanted to show when it's it's running it it will use all your cores to do the the deconvolution. All right. It's done there. Uh, the large stars were protected. Uh, it does look like maybe some of the smaller ones did did creep on in, but but that's fine. Let's go ahead and push that to the slot. Now we can go over to our TV denoise if you want and and just give it a little denoising. There and since we still had the mask applied, it only is affecting those areas that we sharpened up uh, and. Now we also applied a little bit of traditional denoising in there to get rid of uh, the noising, the increased noise that always comes about when you're when you're doing sharpening functions. And we can push that to the slot too. And we can turn off our mask now. Lastly, I want to talk about Larson Secondina sharpening. So this is going to be radial sharpening. So things like cometary tails, where there's radial symmetry around the coma in the coma itself, or things like total eclipses here. So I'm going to open up my convolution deconvolution tool. So Larson Succanina needs a it needs a center of rotation. If you just try clicking preview without a center of rotation, it will say that uh, you need to shift click to set a center of rotation. So you could shift click anywhere on the image to set a center of rotation. Uh, in a case of a total eclipse, right, it's going to be right right in the middle of the sun essentially. There's two methods: subtract and divide. Uh, and it matches the blend mode with them. So it's going to rotate your image, and in this case, subtract them, and then use a blend mode to blend the images back in. So you're doing like a, almost like a radial high pass filter. And then there's also the radial step where as you step further and further away from the center of rotation, it's going to pull those many pixels back in to the sharpening. Uh, so you're going to be looking for, uh, in this case now, radial gradients, uh, not like axial spokes. So it's it's kind of two different rotational things we're looking at. We're looking at things that may be like spokes coming out of it, and the angular step's going to help highlight those. And then the radial steps are going to be looking for like rings of gradient as well. So I'm just going to leave it at, at zero right now for the radial step. I'm going to do an angular step size of 10. These are things you're going to have to experiment with your image to try to bring out features, right? And click preview. And now you can see that it rotated the one versus the other. And importantly, now you can see the rays coming out are highlighted much more. And uh, that's going to change depending on the angular step. So you can undo and redo. And you can really see these ones around here really, really, really pop. And maybe we want to try some uh, radial steps in there as well. Unfortunately, I, I don't think my PNG had the, the bit depth really in there. But you can see that's what it's doing. It's looking for structures with about a width of like 15 pixels or so. So I'm going to set that back to zero, and you, and you can play around with this. We can go a, a degree five rotation, and you can see how that enhances the structure a, a little bit differently. So if you've uh, imaged comets or the total eclipse and you've never touched uh, Larson Seconina sharpening or even knew what it was, highly recommend playing around with this and seeing what additional details you could pull out of your image. Now, this is something that... Um, there's, there's no neural net-based sharpening for a Larson Seconina right now. So you, you need to do the old school method with this. Well, with that, 
I hope you guys have a lot of fun using things like the PSF estimator to actually estimate PSFs in your image, playing around with some old school deconvolution and convolution tricks, uh, using masks, star masks, things like that. And uh, TV denoise is just a great little denoising algorithm. Uh, if, you, if you're not getting good results with neural net based things or you're on just a, a slower computer and you just want some of the tried and true methodology in your processing workflow. Please comment, like, and subscribe.